It's that time of year again. The first Monday in May is upon us, and you guys know what that means. The Met Gala. The Met Gala took place last night, and as usual, it was messy. From TikTokers being banned, questionable red carpet friendships, celebs forgetting who designed their looks, and the Car Jenners. It's a mess, so let's get into it. This year's Met Gala was celebrating their new exhibition called Sleeping Beauty's Reawakening Fashion, and the official theme of the night was the Garden of Time. The Garden of Time is actually a short story by J.G. Ballard. The story details a husband and wife who live in a beautiful villa surrounded by all these flowers. They live a very lavish life. Then one day on the horizon, they notice an army of men and women approaching their villa and closing in on their lives. The only way to keep this perceived threat away is by cutting a flower from their garden. As time passes, they eventually cut the last flower and the army of people overtake their villa. New York Times reported on this theme and talked about how ironic it is, writing, the Garden of Time is a fitting but ironic choice as a theme for the year's most lavish celebration. It's fitting because the Met Gala celebrates the contemporary equivalence of aristocrats at the time of widespread social anger towards elites. It's ironic because the reference suggests that the guests and hosts may be doomed. So now knowing more about the theme, it was expected to see a lot of florals and garden-inspired looks, while some people felt like some celebrities might dabble deeper into the meaning of the night and show up with a look that touches on the book's deeper and darker meaning. It was anticipated that the looks that could come out of this year's Met could possibly be some of the best we've ever seen. And I have to say, there were a lot of great looks last night. Let's start off strong with Zendaya. Zendaya was wearing Meja Marzello by John Galliano, and she looked amazing. She was one of the most on-theme people at the Met this year, and it was honestly so fitting for her to be in this look. Zendaya is huge right now. Her new movie, The Challengers, just came out. Everyone on TikTok is talking about it, and John Galliano also just had his own TikTok viral moment recently as well. His show for the 2024 collection went viral, and creators on TikTok have been recreating the looks from the runway, and that's opened him up to a whole new audience. The kids that were dressing up with pillows and dad's coats and doing the Leon walk, and as a designer, you, you want to inspire the young ones and the young kids. You know, I, uh, yeah, it's amazing to get reviews, but to actually you know, leave one of these venues, go home, and you see a kid has switched his raincoat back to front, charging down the street, and you think, yeah, I've done something here. That, that makes me really happy. But she didn't even stop there. Zendaya came out with a second look for the night. And a lot of people are saying that she won the Met. Two looks, both on theme, both playing tribute to different aspects of the Garden of Time. It was perfect. Someone else who was extremely on theme and was the talk across social media for how good she looked was Mona Patel. Now, when this look was photographed and started making its way onto social media, people were not only shocked by how good it was, but they were also confused on who this even was. There were so many videos asking who the mystery woman was, and everyone is saying that she won, calling her literally Cinderella and awarding her the best dress of the night. A lot of people were also talking about Ariana Grande. She was wearing a custom gown designed by Jonathan Anderson, and according to Billboard, the bodice was created entirely from Mother of Pearl. She had on this flowy, fairy-esque skirt with floral accents. It looked great. A lot of people who just saw the paparazzi or red carpet photos of the dress felt like it was really plain and maybe wasn't on theme, but when you look up close and see the details in the dress, it makes so much more sense. Ariana also later performed at the Met Gala and she changed into a Margiela gown and this has to be my favorite look from her. As always, some of the Car Jenners were also at the Met this year. Kris Jenner made her way up the stairs first so she can watch her daughters walk up, and in attendance was Kylie, Kendall, and Kim. Kylie wore an Oscar de la Renta gown paired with a flower in her hair, and the discourse surrounding this look has been very mixed. A lot of comments are saying that her hair looked amazing, but the dress was giving us nothing, and some people are even claiming that she wasn't on theme. In what way does this follow the dress code? Honestly, can we start turning people away at the door if they don't follow the dress code? She's wearing Oscar de la Renta, which like, uh, normally I love. Where's the dress code? Where's the theme? But there were a lot of people who disagreed and said even though the dress might be simple, it was definitely on theme. 
One person pointed out that the look was simply paying tribute to the statues that were left behind at the end of the Garden of Time story, which makes sense and is on theme. But is it a fan favorite look of the night? Not really. Next, we have Kendall Jenner. Kendall was wearing a never worn before Alexander McQueen from 1999, which maybe isn't on theme for Garden of Time, but it was on theme for Sleeping Beauty's reawakening fashion. This is Givenchy, it's archival McQueen from 1999. Wow. I am so, so incredibly honored to wear it. I'm the first human to wear it. It showed on a mannequin, so it's amazing. And I just like, it was a miracle that it fit. It was a miracle that we found it. And it was, it just feels meant to be. It's and I'm so, so happy. perfect. I think she looks great. It's probably one of my favorite Met Gala looks from her. And it only got better with her after party look. She wore this white dress that looked like it was off a Victoria's Secret Angel. She looked like a fairy, it was on theme, and a lot of people are even saying that this may be better than the dress that she wore to the actual Met. Now let's talk about Kim Kardashian. Everyone is always eager to see what Kim does for the Met because she's usually extremely over the top with her choices. Two years ago, she wore a very fragile Marilyn Monroe dress, which was widely criticized. Last year, she was covered in over 50,000 pearls. And this year, she made her waist disappear. A lot of people are criticizing her Met Gala look this year because of how ridiculously tight her corset must be on her. How's it going? How's it going? It's, it's an art form. But I got it. I feel so snatched I won't even be able to communicate to you how snatched I feel. Like, where are her ribs? Where are her organs going? This dress is stunning, but it's overshadowed by how much pain she's probably in. One comment said, she's in so much pain. And I'm just wondering, does she leave right after the carpet is done? Because there's no way she's able to sit down and watch performances, let alone eat the dinner that's served to them. But the one thing people are talking about even more than her waist is the cardigan. Everyone is so confused why this cardigan was even included in the look, writing, the cardigan looks like it was washed a million times. I don't get it. I need to understand the cardigan, please. The cardigan killed it for me. And it seems like a lot of comments are coming to the conclusion that she must have had some kind of wardrobe malfunction and was using the cardigan to cover it up. But there are some people defending the cardigan choice, saying it's the Margiela cardigan look. One person pointed this out and said, If you look at the SS24 Margiela collection, a lot of the models have cardigan sweater style tops they clutch for dear life. Very on brand in my opinion. But does knowing that make you like the look anymore, knowing that it's on theme for the brand? Or do you still think it looks like she was having some kind of wardrobe malfunction? I also wanted to talk about some of the most memorable hotel exits leading up to the Met Gala. Every year we have celebrities doing the absolute most to make sure no one sees their look before they get to the actual event. And this year's winners were Doja Cat and Cardi B. Doja Cat literally left the hotel in a towel and at first people were like, is she actually wearing a towel to the Met Gala? I mean, last year she went as Carl Lagerfeld's cat, so it wouldn't be too shocking, but no. She did end up changing into a see-through t-shirt dress. Cardi B also did everything she could to make sure she wasn't seen before the Met. She had security holding like 20 umbrellas all around her, and once she arrived, we found out why. She wore this stunning black gown, she was on theme, and she literally needed people to carry her dress just so she could walk. How does it feel to have seven people helping you with your dress? It makes me feel like, yeah, yeah. I'm that Never. Never. Now let's talk about the drama. Every year there's Met Gala drama. It's why every year these videos are always titled like the Met Gala was messy because every year without fail, there's at least a little bit of mess and this year was no different. Starting off, we have to talk about Lana Del Rey and Kim Kardashian. A lot of people were shocked to see Lana and Kim together looking like the best of friends because Lana is good friends with Taylor and as you guys know, there's years worth of drama between Taylor and Kim. One person commented on the videos of them together and said, Kim trying to be friend Taylor's friends. And at first I was kind of like, oh, that's not really a good look. But I think what we're all forgetting is that Lana was good friends with Kim long before Taylor was. 
She performed at Kim and Kanye's wedding. Kim has always supported her. She even did that Skims collection with her. I think some people are reading a little bit too much into it, and I really don't think Taylor would tell her that she can't be friends with someone that she's been close with for years now. The next drama of the night is pretty embarrassing. After the guests walk up the stairs, they usually do media and do some interviews about what they're wearing. Cardi B was interviewed by Emma Chamberlain, and when she was asked what designer she was wearing, she didn't know. Who made this? I feel amazing. Is this amazing designer? They're Asian and everything, so yeah. I love it! Not knowing the name of the person who designed your dress well, at an event that's all about fashion is really, really bad. I mean, I'm sure she was probably overwhelmed. The dress is heavy. It's probably hot. She has cameras all around her being asked questions. But I still think you should definitely know the designer's name off by heart. She did make sure to tag the designer on Instagram. So hopefully the drama, if anything, draws more attention to him and his work. Moving on, we need to talk about Demi Lovato. Eight years ago, it was rumored that Demi had been banned from the event after she said some negative things about the people in attendance. Her last time at the Met was back in 2016, and she later gave an interview to Billboard where she called the people there fake. She said, This one celebrity was a complete and was miserable to be around. It was very clicky. I remember being so uncomfortable that I wanted a drink. She said that she was so rattled by the Met Gala that she left early and headed to an AA meeting. She said, I changed my clothes but still had my diamonds on. Millions of dollars of diamonds on in an AA meeting. And I related more to the homeless people in that meeting who struggled with the same struggles that I deal with than the people at the Met Gala. Fake and sucking the fashion industry's so Demi and the Met were done with each other after that, but it looks like this year she's giving it another go. Moving on, we need to talk about Emma Chamberlain. Emma was once again doing the interviews for Vogue's YouTube channel. This is her fourth year doing it, but some people are suspecting that she may have almost missed out on the opportunity this year. You see, this year TikTok was the principal sponsor of the Met, and as you guys know, Emma isn't on TikTok. She briefly had it back in 2020, but ended up deleting it. I realized that it was infecting my brain with not only too much information, but also like a lot of bad information. Just recently, she rejoined and people think she had to rejoin in order to keep her role as the Mets special correspondent. The TikTok CEO was also an honorary chair. So a lot of people thought this year's Met might be overrun with influencers, but there were hardly any. During the prime days of TikTok, a lot of influencers started to get invited, like James Charles, Addison Rae, and Dixie D'Amelio, and they got a lot of backlash for that. It was rumored that a lot of celebrities who've been in the industry for ages now felt like inviting TikTokers was insulting and made the event feel less special. Even though inviting influencers to the Met brought in a whole new audience, I guess they didn't feel as though it was worth the backlash because this year there were hardly any influencers in attendance. Of course, there was Emma Chamberlain doing her interviews, we had Wisdom K there, and Haley Bailey. But that's about it. Overall, the event seemed to go over smoothly. There wasn't as much drama as there's been in previous years, which I'm sure the attendees loved, and maybe a big part of that has to do with the lack of influencers. Let me know what you guys think about everything down below. What did you think about the looks? Who was your favorite, least favorite? And what do you think about the Met getting rid of the influencers? Let me know, and I'll see you next time.